When I first played Halo, I was a young, ignorant child, and I didn't really know what I was looking at. But I did see a lot of similarities to a game I played earlier, called Marathon. What I saw was a spaceman in a bungee game who was fighting evil aliens who were boarding a human spaceship, and he was fighting them with the help of the ship's useless crew and resident AI buddy. And I also saw marathon iconography absolutely everywhere, including the cover of the game, which is pretty explicit. So to a seven-year-old, it seemed reasonable to conclude that I was playing the long-anticipated sequel to Marathon Infinity. So with all the similarities these two series have, it was easy for me to assume that there was a direct connection, and I'm not the only one who's made such an assumption. Most people have approached these series in the opposite direction. They played Halo first and later down the line learned about Marathon. But, you know, with Marathon being fairly obscure, there's not much information about it. Most people aren't patient enough to get their hands dirty and actually play the game or to even go as far as to read the terminals online. But this hasn't done much to deter people from their speculation and theory crafting about how these two games are related. Now, let's get something out of the way. Everyone knows that now there is no official connection between Marathon and Halo, if nothing else, because Bungie does not own the rights to Halo anymore. It's no longer anyone's place to say if Marathon is connected to Halo because they're owned by different companies. The question, then, is whether they were ever intended to be linked in that way. And a lot of Halo fans, who don't know much about Marathon, seem to have concluded that yes, they totally were meant to be connected, and this connection was only severed the moment Bungie passed Halo onto 343 Industries. There's one video in particular that bothers me. I'm not gonna name names, because, you know, I don't mean to pick on the creator, but I will say he's a guy with nearly a million subscribers as of this video, which probably makes him the most famous person ever to have heard of Marathon. I'm sure he's a wonderful person, but this video of his just wasn't accurate. The reason I bring him up isn't to drag him through the mud and talk about how much I hate him, but because the mistakes he makes are mistakes that a lot of people make over and over again on forums, image boards, and in other videos I've seen. So it's a good example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. So if that person is watching this, or if any of his fans, or anyone knows who I'm talking about, I'm sorry, it's nothing personal, it's just a good example of what I'm here to address, why I wanted to make this video. So, he cites the appearance of the Marathon logo on UNSC ships and Forerunner installations as proof that there is some ancient Forerunner conspiracy connected to some modern shipbuilding company that created perhaps even the Marathon ship, but also ships like the Pillar of Autumn and other Marathon-class cruisers. Also mentioned is the presence of Mjolnir armor in both games and other names that show up in both series. These are just two examples, and already there are a lot of problems. I can only see these conclusions being reached by someone who simply skimmed a few wiki pages on the Marathon wiki and didn't actually play the game. To start with, uh, let's look at the Mjolnir thing. In Halo, Mjolnir refers to the armor that Spartans wear. In Marathon, Mjolnir refers to the cyborgs themselves, not the armor, the guy wearing it. Mjolnir is to Marathon as Spartan is to Halo. There's no real significance to the armor your character has in Marathon. It's not Mjolnir. It's just some suit. Doesn't matter beyond that. Uh, he also mentions the rocket launcher, S-P-N-K-R. And, uh... Hate to break it to you guys, but the reason the rocket launcher is called SPNKR is because that's Bungie's hilarious way of spelling Spanker. There are no deeper lore implications to the Spanker than Bungie thought it was funny. Then there's all the logos and things named Marathon Class, among other things showing up all over Halo. The reason for this is, in my opinion, not to demonstrate a connection. 
It's because Bungie wanted to represent their heritage, probably to acknowledge their dedicated fans or to remind people where Bungie came from. In other words, it's an easter egg or a shout out, not something to be taken literally any more than the silly name tag Keys has or the lost cat poster on the Pillar of Autumn. Suffice to say, not everything in Halo is meant to be taken at face value, and I think a logo of Bungie's previous games that appears literally everywhere should probably be considered one of those things. So people ask questions like, why do the Forerunners, the Covenant, and the UNSC all use the same mysterious logo? You have to understand, you're basically asking at that point, whoa, why is content from a previous Bungie game here? So you might as well ask something like, why do multiplayer maps from Marathon also show up in Halo? Since, you know, the, the Halo multiplayer maps are sometimes, like, real locations in the Haloverse, but what are the lore implications of Duality and Thunderdome showing up? Um, so no, these things don't really say anything about the story, obviously. Like, why do a bunch of myth songs show up in Halo CE? Considering that I see these as basically easter eggs, you know, I could even ask things like, how did Johnson survive the Halo explosion when he was right next to the Pillar of Autumn? Why are there a bunch of Covenant partying to the Mjolnir mix if you press a button hidden on the outside of a skyscraper? Why, why does that button do that? Why does Jason Jones appear half-naked on High Charity? What are the lore implications of this? What's Joe Rogan doing in the forest? Like, speculating can be fun, but sometimes a marathon logo is just a marathon logo. So let's get down to why these games simply cannot coexist in the same universe. There's a lot of backstory elements that just don't add up. It's most obvious with the humans, it's very doubtful that we're looking at the same two humanities in these games. There's a lot of technological differences between the two human races that are presented. In Marathon there's crazy things like hover tanks with plasma guns in their 24th century while apparently in Halo we just haven't gotten there yet in the 26th. AIs in Marathon also only achieve sentience only when they exist within a planet-sized network and this has only occurred rarely and is due to a design flaw. Meanwhile in Halo, they have microchips that are sentient by design. Someone who has actually played both games might correct me here and tell me that actually this could be explained by divergent technology from the Marathon's 300 years long isolation. But there's one irreconcilable difference in the technology that these two humanities have. In Marathon, humanity has not gained the ability to travel faster than light speed in any way except, weirdly enough, short-range teleportation, which is severely limited. The point is, they don't have any wormholes, slip space, warp drives, anything to get them to propagate them throughout the stars in the year 2794. Meanwhile, in Halo, set in 2552, humans freely travel faster than light speed all the time and have used this capability to spread all over the galaxy. As you can probably imagine, the differences in long-range transport capability have some pretty dire effects on these stories about humans shooting aliens. In Marathon, humanity achieves its first interstellar colony through the brute force method of a centuries-long voyage, during which thousands of future colonists are left in cryostasis, supported by a skeleton crew that lives through multiple generations on the way to the future colony. Even if you account for divergent technology, if these games were in the same universe, the crew of the Marathon would have heard about, say, the Covenant that probably would have come up. The ship has limited contact with Earth. UNSC would have, in fact, been able to meet this ship, unless for some reason the UNSC decided to turn their backs on these people and cut them off from greater human civilization forever. We don't really know much about Earth in the Marathon universe, but what little we know 
makes it pretty obvious that the UNSC has never existed. All this is ignoring one critical problem. Didn't want to have to do this, but it's time to take the gloves off. We're going to dig deep into the Halo lore, my friends. Slip space drives existed in Halo even before the year given as the marathon's departure date. It would have made no sense to go through with a centuries-long journey to Tau Ceti if slip space drives already existed. There are all sorts of other inconsistencies I could point to, but hopefully the point's been made. There's lots of proof to say that these games are entirely separate and do not take place in the same universe at all. And the only thing that people have to go on to prove any sort of connection is superficial observations. There is, however, one unanswered question. Some people who actually know what's up speculate that Bungie intended the games to have the same setting until Microsoft acquired Bungie, and so Bungie changed their minds and reworked Halo to be separate from Marathon before Halo even released. There's not much to go on to support this, but there's also not much to contradict it because a lot of the early Halo stuff is lost forever. Only the original developers of Halo could possibly know whether this is true, and they're not about to say anything on the matter, so it's just speculation either way. In any case, we can say with confidence that by the time Halo CE hit shelves, any link that game had to the Marathon universe was cut, if it ever even existed. And that's not to say these games have no connection, they obviously share DNA. They have so many things in common that a lot of people don't know about, or might not have thought about, but we can definitively say that they are in their own universes, and you know what, that's okay, it's not bad for them to be in separate universes. It might be a little more interesting if they were connected, but it's just not the case. Bungie wanted Halo to be something new and different. Well, if you're curious about Marathon and want to learn more, the entire series is free, and you can even play it on Linux, so give it a try if you don't mind reading. <laughs>